I uh, just wanted to shoot this really quick to uh, show to one of my friends how I guess how bias effects works. So actually, I uh, had to get a new interface. <laughs> the one I had really crapped out on me. Um, it was a PreSonus, and it ended up being really shit. It ended up like not even recognized by my computer. So uh, yeah, so I got a new one. So. This is like the you know, usual standard everybody gets when they home record. Um, so I'm going to set this up and then uh, grab my guitar. I can show you how everything works and how it plugs in and uh, I'll get to it. Cool. So another important thing you have to remember is when you go to install these uh, free plugins that come with um, pretty much every interface you buy, uh, you have to remember where they're found, or where, not where they're found, where they're downloaded to, so that you can then find them inside of your recording software. So, usually every time you download them, you have to go into the Windows File Explorer and go to the C drive. They're usually in your program files. You can scroll down to VST plugins and here's all the ones I have the keyboard bias effects right here and also there'll be other things using you know these are where your other programs are like uh you know the positive grid itself that's like the standalone desktop so basically whenever you're going inside your DAW you want to go inside the VST plugins and usually it pretty much like autom like automatically directs you to that so for example if I close out of everything and click on here. You go to file. Well, first you go to insert new virtual amp, and then it, see it directs you to the to the, uh, the plugin file. So, pretty much, you just go to VSD. <clears throat> up on the corner here. Here's positive bias amp, which came with the interface bias effects, which I bought. Uh, what else? Let's see. Here. Some other generic plugins like compression, uh, pitch, and then you usually have like an instruments tab. So that's where the, the keys are. Uh, hopefully, I can find those drum tracks that I also downloaded with this. But I don't know. Who knows? It's pretty confusing. So that's just how you get there, and that's how you insert it. So say I had something in here. Right, see, I, I mean, I have my MIDI keyboard plugged in, so you go to here, type it in, and now it's working, and you can hear the sound. You, how you know is you can also see the, um, the volume right there, so it's just that little uh, bit of advice. Is, it, it is confusing to find, but, you know, as long as it's in your program files, and it's in your VST plugins folder, and usually the DAW automatically opens it up, so it's nothing, you know, that difficult to really figure out. Alright, one more thing. So basically, whenever you plug this thing into um, using a USB, uh, you have to decide what the default uh, playback devices were. So the problem I was having was that if you plug in this and you try to open Spotify, say you're trying to or just watch like a video online or, or listen to music, uh, it's not going to work, and that's because you have to specify what uh, the device playbacks will be. So say you have speakers like this, and you want the playback from a DAW or anything to come through there, and the recording input through here. Well, you have to specify that inside of your uh, settings. So what you do is you go to here, and then you go to playback devices, right? See, I have two. Here's the focus right, and then there's the speakers. So right here, for the playback, for the is what you want is for the speakers or the studio monitors for the recording you want to select that and that's pretty much all you gotta do so obviously the first thing you need is your guitar which then goes from the cable all the way to a di box and this is pretty much used to uh, monitor the signal because uh, the quarter inch jack is too hot to really go into interface to record clear so it changes it to an XLR cable. So this goes into the interface. And you gotta hit this pad button to even, to <laughs> lower the signal even more, and also switch that to instrument. This is the, um, 
the green halo LED lights, they monitor your clipping. So if you're um, going green, you're good. The red means your clipping, which means you have to adjust it to what it is. And a good technique to do is to just really heavily palm you on the strings. And when you do that, make sure it's in the green. But also, uh, you want to make sure that the knob is the furthest to the right that it can be while still being in the green, while you're still doing those like uh, heavy palm mutes, because you're going to get the best tone when you go to record. But uh, that's separate from just using bias effects. So then you, go, you got the speakers, and then you got the actual program itself. And then in order to activate your interface, you have to go to settings, audio settings. Make sure this is on ASIO. Make sure this is selected to Focusrite USB. And these two checkboxes have to be enabled. Okay? And that's pretty much it. And then once you go into the whole program, you get all these different presets that it comes with. Uh, like, you know, the factory, rock, default clean, crunch, high gain. And they also have thrown a few artists for you, like uh, Toes and Abasi from Animals as Leaders. They throw in some of his tones. Um, you know, he's probably the only one I've really checked out and liked. But then I can also go to the Tone Cloud, which is one of my favorite things. See here, I was looking up a John Mayer tone. And basically, all you have to do is just click on it. And then just preview it like this. And then you can play through it. I think you can even record through it like this. But you won't be able to change any of the settings on the pedal. But you can still record <laughs> through just a preview on Bias Effects. So, uh... You know, you just go through and select the different ones. Uh, you know, they're also ranked by popularity. Uh, 45 downloads, nine, 622 downloads. This one has 1,418 downloads. So, And then you can also search for different uh, bars. So, say I wanted more of a gent tone. Uh, I could go to... I don't know, let's just type in, like, periphery. Pretty much gent like that <laughs> so these are all the different presets and then some of them you have to purchase the full license in order to uh, take advantage of them but a lot of these are all also actually just from the standalone uh, bias effects uh, amps and plugins so you can also just preview them like just like that uh, you can basically get anything you want so even if you were into like I don't know, like folk music, like folk song. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing like that. <laughs> but if you go into like, I don't know, like country. Best acoustic sound ever. <laughs> I don't know, these are all different like tones you could use for your, you know, desired songs and stuff like that. If you're going for like an 80s rock, they're probably like a good 80s rock tone. Very early 80s rock. Um, I mean, I, I generally search by artist, so if you're typing like, I don't know, like Metallica. There you go. So, there's all the Metallica stuff. And it sounds really, really uh, <laughs> similar. That's what's so cool about it. You don't have to, like, buy the certain uh, equipment in real life just to kind of get the sound going for what you want. Um... So that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to go an over the shoulder with uh, actually record something in Reaper through uh, just like a cam desktop uh, capture and it'll be better quality so you can really see uh, the difference in the sounds and stuff like that. Alright sweet. So instead of using a, a nice and easy screen capture I had to do it through PowerPoint. Nonetheless, still something there. So start it up and I'll just do a little bit of commentary over it so yeah one of the cool things about bias effects is that it works really great as a standalone VST plugin so on top of uh, using it in its own desktop mode you can bring it into a recording software so I use Reaper so you can bring it in pull it up as a VST and then layer it there's different tracks and, and track your guitar parts. So I already recorded something over here, but I uh, ended up deleting it just to kind of give you guys a new, uh, fresh recording. And there you just go and select it. It's loading up. Cool. 
and I already had that John Mayer uh, tone pre-selected, but I didn't know you could be able to hear audio. There you go. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to bring the actual recording track into the video when I go to edit it, so it'll sound a lot better. But, um, again, this is like the John Mayer. And I was trying to get it to go below the, the screen, but <laughs> for some reason it wouldn't work, so uh, I kind of just gave up. So it's all selected, ready, ready to go. Our track is armed, and then you just start recording. I think that's where I stopped it. There we go. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty much one of the cool things you can do is just pretty much just insert a track and then select even searching by like the kind of artist you want. So and the guitar I'm using is a it's an LTD. So it's got it's not like a John Mayer type of guitar. It's more of a, a metal guitar. It's got EMGs on it. Uh, it's not built for this type of tone but it's very easy to achieve with this and plus it's easy to just um, go straight into the recording you know so I think I was just playing it back here but so now I go to mute the track I'm going to add a new virtual instrument on a new track so let's say I was trying to record two different guitar parts and you wanted to kind of change the tone on the second one, you just open up a new track, Virtual Instrument, and it pulls up a whole new uh, Vice Effects screen. So this time I'm actually going for a more metal tone. So I choose a, uh, a Mark Holcomb preset, which is what I downloaded. I literally just put in Periphery or Mark Holcomb in the tone cloud, and then that's what comes up. to tune down. <laughs> Same thing with that thing. I didn't I don't understand it, but whatever. You need to make sure you disarm and mute the other track. In my ears it just sounds like nothing, but in the actual recorded version that'll add into the uh, the video when it's all mixed in Premiere, it'll actually be the distorted guitar, and you'll be able to hear how you can pretty much just uh, once you record something, you can just overlay it with another tone. So I actually later I actually switch back to um, <laughs> a John Mayer tone after I've already recorded this as a metal to metal tone. So it makes things. You know, easier to fix in the mix, easier to fix, you know, everything's done, you just a little tweak and bias effects, and you're pretty much, you know, good to go, as long as the recording is tight. This is, I wasn't really trying on this, it wasn't, I didn't have any, you know, flashy material, <laughs> it's just kind of a basic, uh, how-to. So here's where I tried playing the <laughs> two completely different guitar parts uh, over each other, and it sounds really, really bad, but <laughs> it's fun to listen to. Imagine trying to make that work. <laughs> I 
Yeah, that was enough of that. And here's where I actually go back and uh, what I was saying before, you can go straight into the tone cloud as long as you select a track during, you know, uh, what you're trying to record and then just go back into the tone cloud. And that's when I'm playing uh, the John Maritone over <laughs> the metal riff I recorded. You can easily just like a couple different selections and then that's it. So now I'm going back into the tone cloud. Yeah, I'm just typing in some different kind of like, you know, delay setting that you can just put over anything. So I don't have to, it's, it's all about not having an amp, like, because uh, without this, you'd have to go back and re-record all the guitar parts on a real amp. But for the convenience of just having it all right in your computer, you can easily just change everything right on the computer. And that works well for me because right now, uh, my good amp is back uh, home in central New York. It's not where I am now, so... All I have is this crappy little practice amp, so I figured this would be a good investment because it's everything's right there in the computer. I think there I chose like a slash Guns N' Roses preset delay, but you know, that's it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's bias effects and how to bring it into your DAW, uh, the equipment you need, and also, uh, you know, how to create music with it on the startup side i'm still new to it i'm still learning but uh it's gonna be a good little tutorial to practice to practice editing video for me and to practice uh recording a little more so 